I think, I mean, the linearity of the stability, but I think it gives them standards. The proof rates, um, it's also a state, they started with a lot of the excitement about these French um, metal physics. But, but then the cobalt things, they are frustrated materials. They live on uh, lattice that they're geometrically frustrated. And uh, we see that um, the temperature behavior of the resistivity uh, up to this particular example up to 100 Kelvin is um, very approximated by something that is linear in temperature. I don't think guys, um, did the linear scattering wave be revealed by an less optical relativity? Um, and linear T scattering wave would translate to a linear T density. Iron satellites, see, superconducting position. This is intermediate here, and the bus was superconducting position. You see that it's a stability slope And so the question you would ask is um, is this linear in T? Uh, Realization rate, um, always of the same origin. Is, is it some universal physics that we are looking at? Or is this every system um, finding its own way of ending up with something that, that defines this um, number of everything with in itself? So, is that universal origin? And you could ask, is perhaps a different aspect, uh, is quantum criticality at play? Because um, if there's dynamic scaling, there's only sort of scaling, you would automatically expect a linear T relationship rate. So, and um, let's go back to the um, chemifermium materials. This is an uranium compound, and only one, and I'm fine, but I want some important that the, so um, the systems tend to order magnetically. If you look at the spin susceptibility, this is something like you know, the order per beta um, uh, correlation function. Um, this spin susceptibility shows omega over scaling over a wide temperature range and uh, points towards vertical uh, form. But as I said before, um, if this is a three dimensional system, if it's not intermagnet, we are. Um, already in dimension five, we do not expect or we go to scale. If this system for some reason manages to be essentially two dimensional, it would place you at the upper critical dimension. There, special, special things happen, and the exponent should become the data of Gaussian corrections. And so you will not expect an exponent that looks like answer in this problem. Okay, so something. Um, should strike you as, as art with like this. Um, here's another example from 2000, I'm not sure where uh, the omega one scaling has been reported in this material close to a um, antiphonic instability, still in couple of road. And um, besides this omega one scaling and this stability, she also reported that one sees the same exponent, which is dot seven five, almost everywhere in her cell. Um, if you would go back to um, the critical field theory, since it's not there's a lot of and we have to tune to the order in wave vector to look at the scaling properties in, for example, omega and t. You would not find omega and t scaling, but you would also not see the type of scaling that you would expect. Everywhere at the same time. Okay, so there's only have what he's scaling and, and other things that are impossible. If you see something everywhere in the three you should always think, oh, there must be an open. Right? Because uh, the Fourier transform, if it's the same everywhere in the three also, it should give you something. Good. This is from 2012. Um, there's an STM experiment on the compound where I have showed you the resistivity. Um, STM uh, measures the current, the tunneling current. And so this was done at the temperatures. And uh, this group plotted this tunneling current as a function of energy and temperature and said, oh no, 
this is also a window where he's scaling in the density curve states because um, the SDF measures in the part of the spectral function that I showed you before. Um, very recently, this um, is um, another um, report of Omega with this scaling in another Fermium compound, Fermium Rhodium, Fermium Rhodium 2 Silicon 2. Here, the system is also close to a anti thermogenetic instability. But what the people looked at is not the uh, order parameter susceptibility. They didn't look in the spin sector. Instead, they studied the charge sector of the problem, which to some extent is a bystander. Right? You, you would think you can clearly break it out. Um, so they started the optical, uh, the optical connectivity of this problem. It's a problem that shows only the scaling. Very puzzling. In the human you can always argue, of course, that uh, for some reason this is not there. And um, I'm, I'm not saying this to, to belittle anybody. Um, I think um, these are tough experiments. You, um... So I could go back to one of these experiments and tell you why I don't believe it, but I, I'm not going to do that since I can record it. Um, but maybe after that, um, I'm happy to tell you. Okay? Yeah? Yeah. Yeah. So. Yeah. Um, you see, they go up to 15k, and if you compare this with other measurements, of for example, the linear resistivity, it strikes you as particularly high. I, I, I agree. Um, yet, I'm not doubting uh, this experiment. This is not the one I, I was um, referring to, but um, this, this is a good example of what, what I mean. You should always check with other measurements. For example, if you see something like, like this, let's, let's take in particular the optical connectivity. If you go with omega to zero in the optical connectivity, you should cover the ordinary um, resistivity or conductivity in that case. And um, if there is linear relaxation rate, which it should, if there's only a scaling, scale, that quantity should be linear in temperature over a comparable dynamic range as, as this experiment. And um, sometimes this may not work out. But, but I think this is, uh, but, but these are probably final points. But I think it's a, a fair question. Uh, and, and the one I had in mind is exactly a case like that, where I believe. That it may not be only what he's saying because other quantities do not show this type of position. Okay, but um, let's uh, move on. Um, this simply repeats what, what I said before. We would expect that the dynamical exponent, so that now is the dynamical exponent, not the wave function in the relation sector. For, for this problem, uh, where you have uh, anti paramagnetic phase where the mean temperature goes to zero. Delta C is here the tuning parameter, and you, you see the quantum critical fan. So, for this problem, we would expect that Z is equal to 2. And so, in two and three dimensions, we should be largely at the Gaussian fixed point, or at least at uh, the, the marginal dimension where it's Gaussian plus corrections. Okay? And so, hyperscaling should not be valid. And there should therefore be no basis. Given what we discussed before, for omega what is saying. So something um, needs to be understood here. And in order to understand this, um, I want to first introduce this kind of material class, which are these heavy fermions. And um, I want to make the point that um, in all these systems, and, and maybe even beyond um, the heavy fermions, but what you see is sort of um, the thinner plane of localization and tenacity. If the system wants to go from something that is intended to something that, that is localized. And uh, that would automatically bring in aspects of, of the charge, like in the optical conductivity. And it's, it's um, if you think of a bar transition, the antiparamagnetic is, is not, um, it's, it's a secondary phenomenon, right? That, that you get antiparamagnetic. And um, I'm not saying that this is exactly the same thing, but, but it's sort of, uh, a um, general theme to, to uh, think about these systems. 
And then we have to go to the, um, the main players in compounds like CN4 and mu 5 which are the five electrons. So there are the rare earth elements, like for example, the cereal or the calcium. And if you think of your chemistry class, you uh, recall that uh, you fill the, the 5S and the 5P, and at some point, the system goes back and starts filling up the 5 shell. And that gives you the, the series of the of the world in the times. That's the world. And so what we have in these systems is um, Hamiltonian, where you have conduction electrons. So this is like a bunch of free fermions, if you wish, which are coupled through their spin density to these local moments. So the serial and the interior, they would live on some regular just some time. And since you fill up the five and shut it down, you get something like um, quantum space, localized on these sides. And um, this Hamiltonian, which is sort of a making a model for this kind of system, describes the conduction electrons and their spin exchange interaction with these local lines. So that's believed to be um, a minimal model for what is worth. Good. And um, now we can go through a transition by changing this exchange coupling. This can be done, for example, when you apply pressure. That's one way to go. Um, but for the purpose of um, this talk, um, Okay, so for the purpose of this talk, let, let me uh, just um, make a very simple uh, remark, which is that if we go to a high temperature, we can sort of forget about this exchange coupling. So we have a bunch of local moments. Okay? And they carry entropy. They carry not to entropy and sun. So the, the, the spin entropy that you have in this problem at very high temperatures is large. If you now cool down, you have to get rid of this. That's what thermodynamics demands. And this suggests that um, if no longer add y in the phase diagram. So if we are at high temperatures, no matter what the pressure or whatever we feel can be this, for this material class, at high temperatures, we should think of having these local moments. And as you cool down, they need to get rid of this entropy. One way of getting rid of this is simply order of quantity. Okay. That turns it down to, um, let's say, either up or down, and then the system spontaneously chooses one or the other, and um, off you go, you have to be the, the, the same already. There's another possibility, which has to do with the reason why these materials are heavy. They are heavy. They, 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 the turbine rolling to silicon tube is one of the heaviest systems that, that we have in, in this business. So, electron correlation is already so strong that even in the non magnetic phase, the effective mass is a factor of 1000 uh, of the electron mass. Okay. That's why they are called heavy. And um, you can think of this enhancement if you want to think of it in terms of a family picture. That you get correspondingly enhanced density of states at the Fermi energy. And if you remember the stone of criterion, um, it's the density of states at the Fermi energy that, that will tell you, um, you you're close to a, a, a transition because it helps a very small um, interaction uh, to reduce the transition. Okay? So, this enhancement of the density of states, the EDA, effective mass. Okay. Seems to suggest that um, it's very easy to uh, induce transitions inside the system. Yes. And um, since we see this omega 1 key scaling, which is turned beyond the of physics, because um, so where, where does this name come from? Um, we argue that omega 1 key scaling is a hallmark of the fixed point. But the quantum to classic in that means says we should have to see the two, and therefore we are far from the other dimension, so we should not see omega by scaling. So if this is omega by scaling of a critical state, it should somehow define this things for now uh, description. 
which which we did in order to say, oh look, it's uh, B plus B plus C. So um, and in order to understand that, it seems reasonable to understand um, how do they get happy in the first place, which which leads into the comment. Okay, and um, I try to be um, a bit quick on this part because I'm getting the uh, so this is um, now the condo Hamiltonian. Yeah. Let's say I focus on one single side. I forget about the letters, I focus in on the ones. Then I have my local moment due to the serial moment, the exchange dumping constant, the spin density of the conduction electrons that um, give rise to a spin density at the side of the moment. And in such a case, if you measure the resistivity, you start on high temperatures, you go down. What you see is that in a, in a good method, you would expect that uh, the resistivity as you pull down goes down, down, down. And because you have impurities in, in your system, it's such a resistivity. If you have magnetic impurities, which give rise to this kind of Hamiltonian, then you see something different. You can pull it down. And suddenly, the realization rate um, sort of um, leads to an increase of the resistivity. So, resistivity gets worse as you pull down. And so, resistivity increases. There's a characteristic energy scale, it's called the common temperature, which marks some of the energy. And then, if you pull down further and further, you will again see that the resistivity saturates, but at a much higher level. Which again reflects the uh, higher density of states. Okay, so what's going on? Um, it's not really a phase transition, it's a crossover in the window, which is a little bit unfortunate because you start from something simple, you end up with something not so spectacular, but um, the underlying physics is really interesting. And uh, in fact, this problem was the first. Um, application of our gene methods to run this matter. And it's also a baby version of what happens in high energy physics with, with uh, confinement of cross. It, it is placed with emission of central freedom because at very high temperatures, our spin is essentially free. But as we go down um, to low energy, the, the, the spin is um, bound in, in the same place. And therefore, it's no longer there for, for spin exchange scheduling. So this is exactly what happens. We start with a free spin. As we pull down, it forms a spin singlet with the spins of the conduction electrons. But um, this is a main body um, singlet. And along the way, it, um, on forming the singlet, it comes up with an energy scale, which is the common um, energy scale. And it takes the system to what is called the strong coupling fixed bond. Um, this is the RG language, and it reflects the fact that if you do RG works proper, you find that perfectly the exchange coupling constant in your RG scheme goes to infinity. Okay. So the thing that between the local spin and the production electrons is infinitely strong, and therefore uh, it normalizes. Just for the world, but I don't know how relevant. But relevant here is not meant in the sense. Um, and all that is left is a potential scattering term, and potential scattering term is referring to the this enhanced resistivity. Okay, so that's sort of physics. Um, but there are many ways you can think about this counter effect. There's another one you can use ideas for from conformity theory. And um, what you can extract from this is that in the condo problem, if you look at the spin susceptibility as a function of temperature and frequency, you would think that since you have an intrinsic energy scale, this is um, a function of omega over this intrinsic energy scale and temperature over the energy scale. Redundantly, uh, but still true. You could also add omega 1 t because it's a function of the two. It's also a function of the relation of the two. And so it's also a function of omega 1 over t. But this trivial omega over t scaling, you, you really only would expect in a sense that the k goes 
to infinity to, to swap it out of the system. And what I'm trying to say is this is that only in the zero temperature, far away from K, you, you would expect to see something like the economic of this scale in that problem. Because it doesn't really happen. Um, if you go and use the conformal field theory like this, you well, so at least um, in the flat, and, uh, there's no way they're able to show that the spin susceptibility in that problem has this form. Okay. That comes because you can think of the um, of, of the underlying space as being dropped up on the cylinder. And, and so this mapping to the cylinder is reflected in this combination. The point I want to make here is that uh, in terms of tau compact to expect for the common problem this combination. And if you were able to Fourier transform, it would actually imply on the this way. But if you try to do the Fourier transform for this function, you will see that um, you cannot really do it. There is an intrinsic scale, which I can tell you about the technical business, but I don't want to, want to waste time. So if you could do it if this exponent is um, less than one, then this problem goes away. But uh, for the common problem itself, that's what I'm doing. Okay. Good. So, um, but let's go back to the latest. Um, I talked to you about one way of releasing the entropy, which was to come down this side. Okay. Going to the back step and um, then getting rid of the entropy. In this case, uh, we would not need to build the condo effect at all. This is a possibility that we have at all disposal. <laughs> If you go into another machine, this, which is uh, on the side that is large, there's a second way that you put the rid of this entropy, which is undergoing on screening each of the sides. So you would form a singlet with each of the spins and the conduction electrons, and then spin entropy would also be garnered. What's the difference between these two states? Well, there's a quantum magnetic order. But there's also a reflection of um, the, the electronic properties, which you see in the Fermi model. One state that you have to follow active um, has a large Fermi surface because the forever electron kind of delocalizes. It participates in the electronic properties, and if you count the electrons, um, it includes the forever electron. And so if you perform a Experiment that comes to the electrons, the charge carriers that are on it, it says, oh, we have the large charge carrier concentration. On the other hand, if you get rid of the entropy by magnetic order, then the very surface remains smaller because the fire electrons are um, localized. Okay. And so these are the two possibilities. And the question now is, um, how do we go from one to the other? Because even in the magnetic phase, we know that the condor effect has to be destroyed. So even in the magnetic phase at zero temperature, um, the, the, the condor effect is susceptible to magnetism. If you, if you have a large magnetic field, you, you, you would be able to destroy it. So you would expect that even in the magnetic state, it will not survive. But on the other hand, in the Fermi liquid state, the state, it's the condor effect that, that has to get rid of the spin entropy. Okay? So these are the two sides, just like the transfer speed icing model that we have for sides. And the question is now what happens if we, if we go towards the critical point? Which one is realized? And, and so we have um, two possibilities. One is that the line that marks no condor effect to the condor effect terminates right at different particular volume. And that's called the um, local criticality or condom breakdown scenario or critical condom destructions. Different names have been um, involved. And here you expect, because there's some additional energy state that, that signals the breakdown of condom effect, that as you go at zero temperature from large delta, you, you have a state where the forever electron is integrated. And right at the critical point, you, you have a magnetism setting in, but at the same time, the 4F electron localizes. 
because the, the condo effect is still on our vector. The other possibility is that this kind of line uh, terminates somewhere in the magnetic phase. Because I told you that even the magnetic phase, you, you, you can find arguments that condo effect is not valid. On this side, it has to be entered. And then so the, the place where you lose the condo effect at zero temperature might happen somewhere away from the quadratical point, definitely in the magnetic phase, perhaps even outside of the magnetic phase. Who knows? And so that's um, the second scenario. And um, this is what would happen in the so called spin density wave scenario. Here, the picture would be that. Um, for the quantum critical physics, that you have these heavy mass particles, condo effects active, but, but now, um, because of nesting properties of this large body surface, it's these heavy mass particles that uh, start to order magnetically in an SDW scenario, and, and you get a gap opening in SDW gap at, at the uh, ordering gap. Well. And uh, only later, people in the face thinks. Um, we finally go to, to reconstruct the funding surface and produce the funding. And for this scenario, one, one would um, expect no omega over t scaling when you look at the correlation functions. Whereas the statement is that in this scenario, the, the condo breakdown scenario, you find omega over t scaling. Um, and here you cannot do the omega, the, the quantum classical mapping, which led us to. Think about the upper critical uh, physics because you cannot construct the digital Gunner Wilson function. You, you have to invoke the physics, the microscopic physics of, of the condom effect and, and its uh, destruction. That doesn't make, uh, do I make some sort of sense? That um, the usual procedure is to write down a uh, function for the order parameter and its fluctuations. And, and then you look at it and say, oh, this is a B plus set dimensional um, beast. Here you cannot do that step because there is additional physics, there's an additional critical law coming in. And so the question is how how would one handle this? What's the critical thing creating? Okay. Um, yeah. Okay. Yeah. 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 So it's it's second order, um, but um, I think I've slides that they kind of answer this question. Um, and I think I'm I'm not there. I'm, I'm coming to an end. But yeah, I'm. I'm um, trying to, to turn it on. So I, I show you the slides, and uh, so this is this is kind of um, the, the setting, and then one can uh, come up with various themes how this is done. Um, and I think I had uh, um, sorry, I, I, I don't have this uh, one here, so let me go back. Um, so this is the starting point of the one can ask question, what's, what's the right peaks in your need, what's the right stopping model we should um, use, and do we see physics which gives us omega with scaling and um, this, this trade down of quantum classical. Mm -hmm. um, but trying to answer your question now, um, so since um, if you look at the SDW, the cross particles are essentially set as I go through the quantum the, the form. So set doesn't really vanish. Okay. Um, here, let's say at t with zero, um, the, the Fermi surface goes from being um, large on this side to being smaller on the other. And that sounds like a feature of the first order position, not the second order position. But at the same time, set vanishes, which 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 is um, the, the whole um, Part um, of, of the quasi particle to zero. And so, if you take that into account, it's actually smooth. And you, you can think at least at time temperatures uh, in different and critical regions that, that you have um, incoherent scattering at, at both Fermi surfaces. So, there's a K of small, there's a K of large. And in the Fermi liquid phase, at T with zero, it should be unique here. 
it's either the player large or the player small. And if you look at the realization rate of energy that I was showing you before, you should be able to decide where, so you can write this down with KF, uh, K minus KF as well. And, and so a key principle that should tell you which one is incoherent and which one is coherent, where does the realization rate vanish? And in the critical region, um, you, you should not be able, intrinsically, that object is larger than, than the temperature scaling. And that's, that's the statement of the response from the surface. Well, you have data. That's, uh, but um, if you go at T uh, to zero, but we have set those to zero, it's a second order message. Okay, so uh, time's up, so I stop here. And um, I thank you, Peter, for your interest and for your patience. That's not your fault. Thank you very much. Any questions? Do not bend your hands. Do not bend your hands. Lowering the temperature is usually considered in any degree of the, the spin entropy, right? But um, in what region should be considered? In what regions? Uh, in what region? Yes, in what region? So, um, okay. Um, yeah, so uh, how far away from? Yeah. Gives me a chance of uh, shortening this one <laughs> so, um, If you start with a model, which is typically a model with fermions, okay? uh, then in this model here, which is the model, everything is in general. They everything are fermions. Even though I have written the interaction in terms of um, S squared, but um, this is only to bring out those symmetries. So, at very high temperatures in these systems, the four and the electrons would be able to, to hop around their antinomy energies. Okay? So, you have to pull down sufficiently in order to go from a model where you have only fermions to one that has spins. Okay? So, there's a convenient temperature range now, which is 300 Kelvin or so for a realistic system. Um, but it, it, it also depends on, on the microscopic model and where they actually have molecular spins. And this is an argument that's only for something like the five It's not for the two breaks. In the two breaks, you have much physics, so you have also this interplay of neural um, uh, degrees and molecular degrees. But, but there, this argument may not apply. Okay? But, but here it applies because they're saying that this atomic physics is a large energy scale. It's um, of the order of electron volts. Um, and, and so it gives me local moments. And once I have the local moments and I want to pull it down, everywhere in the phase diagram where you have these local moments, you have to face the problem of this dimension. But you can run down the current one, like an Anderson one, where you won't have the local moments. And they will be generated as you pull down. And um, um, this is um, this is the physics of the of the uh, super wheel transformation. Mm -hmm. Okay, so uh, you can do that in the present as well, but, but usually it's done the Hamiltonian that tells you how to get the local moments. So, but you need the local moments. I'm not sure. Does this kind of answer your question? Okay, good enough. Okay. Thank you. Okay. Any other questions? or from online audience. So the fact that the only now the scaling exists even above the upper first dimension. Um which indicates that the breakdown of the lambda or uh units time period. So um I wonder if this thing to the fact that uh, yeah, we have a uh, surface jump or product change 
the cost of transition so that we detected um, actually it's no longer pure or solid. Um, yeah. So, um, um, if you, so let me, yeah. So, um, th this is a scenario where um, we, we have kind of very common phrase for this, okay? And um, let me know about this answer is uh, the question that they have. If you come to us, this case, with, with this one, if, if this additional line is far away from the critical part, you and you want to survive the physics of this part, you just construct um, a functional for the other parameter and, and its fluctuations. Um, that you can do that by taking the microscopic model and integrate everything out. I mean, that it's not all of them, and it's fluctuations. And, and that's against what Brandon Wilson functional. functional. And once you have done that step, um, you will not find what he's saying because this is living in, it's in the same universality class as the model, which is classical in D plus F and so on. Okay. The second possibility is that the condo effect, which which has to be a play on this side, and is not a play on this side, is becoming is part of the critical physics. So we are never allowed to get rid of it. Another way of saying this is in this case, this condo energy scale, the effect of condo energy scale is, is, is sent to infinity, it's taken at a high energy scale, and the rising particles, which lead to the other parameter. If they have operated up there, then you have to be said that you work with. In this case, you cannot do that. You have to describe the framework of the convert. And so, at the transition, you go at the same time um, from um, internal electrons, internal electrons to local mass electrons. And so, they local mass at that point. And um, therefore, you see, for example, in the charge sector, there's something happening which, which the optical conductivity picks up. That, that's the way of, uh, I guess, thinking about it in, in terms of this picture. And if you want to write down an effective uh, Franklin Fick theory, you have to understand how to describe this. So it's not just the other parameter, uh, which, which would be a bosonic theory or some sort. So we have to be one. And uh, can, can I make one, one? Because I want to show it in my slide. Um, here is um, typically when you write down something for splits. You, you know that there's a geometric uh, very phase uh, because of the phase space of spin. And so it's a decent, I guess, guess that um, the critical physics might have something to do with this, that, that you need to encode this physics. So that way it makes something how it will play out when you write down the microscopic theory. But, uh, yeah, I was just about to say that because of this jump to perfect surface at the you know common breakdown transition. So we cannot simply integrate out the fermion selection of concretes. That is what the first minute state of the Right, but um, to, to be fair, of course, there are many um, uh, attempts where, where people notice that um, once you have um, get this most working around, you cannot integrate out um, to, um, that may lead to um, additional effects, which may explain the ongoing scaling. In some sense, uh, sorry, in, in a scenario like this, where it's, if you construct um, the other parameter theory, but because of the gapless nature of the excitations, you are not integrating now. You have to analyze corrections beyond the other. Uh, which, which, which is um, conceptually different from arguing this way. Yeah. And I mean, you know that all the way down. Yeah. Um, this one? Yeah, yeah. So, I think. This one? I think that's a very interesting question, but I think it's a problem. I think um, 
It's a great question. Yeah, I don't have any language. I'm honestly, I don't even know how to get quantum physics out of the very face, like, like a lot of terms. But there, there might be a way. Um, which is a much, I guess, a simpler question than the one you ask. But I think it's a very interesting question. Uh, it would be nice to know the answer. So, for example, since this comes with the size of the spin, you could imagine that you could that you take this as a as a as a um, that, that can flow in the actual sense. And um, it would be nice to understand how to do that. But in some sense, it's a it's a it's not local and it's it's gives you the illusion that, that you live on a two-dimensional face space, but, but then you know for spin you have what you have up and down spin and that's it. So it's highly constrained. And I'm not the right person to ask that, but uh, it's not the answer that we know. It's a very interesting <laughs> Yeah, so um, this is um, done, for example, in something like this, like this pool that I'm going to one kind of tries to get some of these effects. And this is in larger analysis where um, you go for SUN and um, you deal with um, the canonical particle experiments and bosons. And it's yet, um, it gives you um, reasonable results. Uh, I have the slides there. I, um, but there's a handbook, and you can always ask me. And it's yeah. Sometimes I can get an immediate answer by saying I have no idea. Yeah. Okay, any questions? If not, let's say. Uh, okay, so, thank you for very nice information.